Welcome to Drawing from the Collection for Children Live. My name is Tiffany Wolf-Smith. I am Assistant Curator of Education here at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. We'll be live every first Sunday with a new artist and a new artwork based off of something from the permanent collection. So today we have joining us Fort Worth-based artist, Corey Thompson. Now, Corey was born in Los Angeles, California. She grew up between the United States, the Solomon Islands, and Papua New Guinea, and currently lives in Fort Worth, Texas. She is an MFA candidate for painting at Texas Christian University here in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, she is uh, a teaching assistant and the recipient of a graduate fellowship. So Corey received her BA in fine art from North Park University in Chicago in 2013. Um, she, her work in writing have been featured in two recent publications, Mother's Day, organized by Linka Clayton, and Shelter in Place, Artist Mother's Work, organized by Tulika Lansaria and Angela Lopez. So we're so excited to have Corey with us today. Thank you for joining us for Drawing from the Collection Live for Children. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So we're excited Corey has chosen to focus on a seven color lithograph in the Modern's per Permanent Collection, Julie Bosey's American Donuts from 1992. So Corey, tell us a little bit about what you like about Julie Bosey. Um, I really I really love how she uses her practice to collect and document things in the world around her. Um, it's really apparent in this food piece, but she also does it in her, um, her landscape paintings of these really kind of everyday scenes of America. Um, yeah, I just think it's really admirable that she finds this everyday material worthwhile um, and spends a lot of time with it in her paintings. Yeah, and um, I know Corey's work, her most recent work, and she is really into organizing. So it's exciting to see her pick this work. I really know why it's attractive to her. So American Donuts, tell us particularly what you love about this piece. Well, I first saw this piece and many others like it when she had her show at The Modern about a year ago. Um, and just really loved like the presentation of the work and little drawers she had like reproductions of American fast food. Um, mm -hmm. And I really, I just love collections and laying things out in grids. That's what I'm doing right now. So yeah, it just checks a lot of boxes for me. I think it's really satisfying to see all of these things like laid out and accounted for. It kind of says that every single piece matters. Yes, and everybody loves food. It's a universal love, right? Yeah. So, um, all right, we're so excited to see what project you have for us today based off of American Donuts by Julie Bosey. What materials do we need to get together? You're going to need a few pieces of paper to draw on, um, some pencils, eraser, ruler, and then your snacks. I'm choosing snacks because I'm excited to eat them when I'm done, but you could really use any category of things that you have, like your favorite things that you've made out of Legos or everything in your kitchen junk drawer. It really doesn't matter. I think the great thing about this project is that when you look in close detail at the things in your life, they all become interesting. So any, any category will do, but I'm doing food. Okay, awesome. Well, while everybody goes and gets their snacks, we're gonna switch our spotlight over to Corey so we can work together and watch her hands. Okay, so um, first you're gonna get your food out. I have popcorn, goldfish, cashews, chocolate covered almonds, all kinds of things. Um, and then you're gonna wanna use one of your pieces of paper to arrange them all. I'm gonna kind of go for a grid shape. So I'm gonna start with the bigger pieces just to make sure that there's room for them. Sorry, this is so crackly. Um, maybe some potato chips. When I'm doing something like this, I'm trying to make sure that I come up with a balanced composition. So I'm putting like one dark thing over here, a couple dark things over here, 
Um, and then I'm also thinking about texture, like these are really wrinkly. You can't see it on the camera, but they are. <laughs> um, these are really shiny, these chocolate covered almonds. So we'll practice drawing shiny things. Um, the popcorn is probably gonna be really challenging. I don't know why I chose to draw this, but um, we'll give it a try. Um, I think I'll put a cracker in this empty spot. So it's not like an exact grid, but you can see that um, everything is kind of lining up in one way or another. And then I think I'll do some goldfish up here. My daughter really likes goldfish, so we always have these in the house. And these ones are um, flavor blasted, so they have like extra cheese powder, which is getting all over me. It's kind of gross, but we'll work with it. Okay, I think this is plenty, if not too many things. Once you have an arrangement that you feel happy with, that's gonna be interesting to draw, you can kind of just push it to the side to a place where you can see it easily and then bring your drawing paper over. And the first thing we're gonna do is make some margins on the paper. This is just gonna make the drawing feel like it's not getting too squished. <laughs> and you don't wanna make these margins too dark because um, you're gonna erase them later and you don't want like a ghost line on your paper. So you just line up the edge of the ruler. I'm not even measuring anything. I'm just using it as a straight edge. I hate measuring. You do it on all four sides really gently. I think some people would probably go ahead and use the ruler to make like a grid on their paper too, <clears throat> but I don't really believe in that. So we're gonna put the ruler to the side. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm just gonna start with the object that's closest to me, which is the popcorn. And popcorn is kind of a weird, craggy shape, but we're just gonna go for it. Some kind of bubbly parts. This one looks like a weird creature. Um, that'll work. So I'm really just focusing on the outline of the objects right now. And I'll get into more details later. And actually, a good thing that you can do if you're worried about setting up all these pieces on your paper is just to kind of like draw a blob as a placeholder for each of your things. And then you can go back in later and put something there, more details. So those are my popcorns. I'm gonna make some blobs for my almonds. This one's a little bigger. This is really rough, so it doesn't have to feel like it has to be perfect yet. So that's my bottom layer. Now I'm going to put in my um, cracker and I can see, I'll scooch this over so you can see too. The cracker covers like maybe one and a half popcorns. So I'm really not measuring anything. I'm just looking at the relationship between all the parts. Um, so my cracker is going to go about here. We'll make that prettier later. Same thing with the Reese's pieces or peanut butter cup, I guess. When you're drawing a circular object from the side, it's not a perfect circle. It becomes an oval. Um, and then the bottom of the wrapper looks like that. These potato chips are going to be really easy because they're just big blobs. Same thing with the cashews. And same thing with the apricots. The apricots are something that I keep in my studio all the time because they're really good. Okay, I don't know what it is about <laughs> these um, goldfish, but I find them so hard to draw. I think it's because they're one of the only things that I chose 
that has like a recognizable shape. If it doesn't look like the goldfish that you know, that you eat all the time, it's just not right. Like this guy's tail got too skinny, but we'll go back later. Okay, so I have all of my general shapes and now I can just go back in and kind of deal with some more details. Like um, on this Reese's peanut butter cup, I'm gonna add a little zigzag edge and draw some diagonal lines coming down from it. And then I'm gonna use my eraser to kind of get rid of that first rough circle that I drew. The eraser is really essential to this project. <laughs> I read that Julie Bosey, because she was doing this project with her American Food Lithographs before the age of the internet, um, she did all of her research by like collecting menus and taking pictures and taking road trips, which just sounds like the best road trip to me. Um, I would love to take like an American tour of donuts. So I'm noticing on my um, Reese's that the wrapper has come away a little bit and it's making kind of a dark spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in. And the edge of the potato chip is kind of curled up so I can see it right here and there's a big hole in the middle. So I'm gonna outline that. You could spend a really long time making this drawing. You could go into a ton of detail if you want to. Um, so I have actually like skipped ahead from this stage because it's pretty basic. Um, eventually you'll wanna come up with something that is a little bit more like this. So, um, there's like some details already sketched in. Now I'm going to show you how to add like texture and shadow and all of those tricky things that make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, so I'm going to start with the almonds because they're really reflective. I'm just going to go over the whole thing kind of lightly. And it's okay if you get out of line. Um, and I'm noticing that there's kind of like a dark streak in the middle. So I'm gonna make that part darker. And there's a highlight right around here. So I'm gonna make the top edge a little bit darker too. And this is the absolute darkest part right here. You're not supposed to blur your drawings with your fingers because it gets them oily. It's not archival, but I do it all the time. So that's my unprofessional drawing tip of the day. Um, what else? I find drawing from life really soothing because it's kind of like, I think it's like a paint by number. Like the things that you're looking at tell you what to do. You don't really have to make any decisions. It's just, it's all right there. I've been doing this for almost as long as I can remember. For the apricots, they're kind of of, they're also dark, but they're not quite as dark. So I might do like just a little bit of shading on them and then rub it in and then re-emphasize the outline and then add some of these like 
nasty little wrinkly textures that are all over them. They look weird, but they taste great. They're like so sweet. Um, for the goldfish, because they're covered in this cheesy powder, I'm just adding some dots. Sometimes with drawing, it's better just to take a shortcut and add all of the same kind of mark to something so that it looks consistent. Um, I don't know if you can even really see that from up there. Uh, and you can add more of your texture marks where you are seeing shadow and that will make the object look a little rounder. Like that. Okay, popcorn. This is a real challenge. I think if you wanna get better at drawing, you could probably just draw popcorn every day and you would get there. <laughs> um, I don't know. I chose this because I really like eating popcorn, not because it's very fun to draw. Um, so they all have these kind of little like tan texture bumps and I'm just like with the fish, I'm gonna use the same kind of mark on all of them just so that you can tell from one piece to the next, like, oh, this is the same kind of thing, the same part of the popcorn. This one has a little piece of something right there and right there. might even do that blur thing a little bit too and add some wrinkly parts. Okay, um, same thing with the peanut butter that's oozing out of this peanut butter cracker. I'm just gonna make it a little darker. The edge of this cracker is kind of um, perforated like a stamp. So you can just make little jagged lines. I don't know what snacks you're drawing, but I eat a lot of peanut butter crackers, especially when I'm in the studio. It's kind of toasty on top too, but I think I'm kind of ruining it now. Okay, so basically you can go around and keep on adding detail for as long as you want. Um, you could add little like drop shadows underneath all of them in the same place under each item if you wanted to. Stuff like the potato chip, you wanna be really subtle with the texture because if you were to draw like big circles where all the bubbles are, that starts to look more like pizza than a potato chip. So sometimes all you need is just like half of a little mark and it's like oh now I see that that's a bubble. So you want to keep doing that for as long as you want until you get sick of it or really hungry um, until it looks something like this. So I've added all of my little shadowy bits, all of my textures. Um, I might just want to like clean up around the edges where things got too blurry. Um, you can see with the peanut butter cup that the edge closest to me is brighter. That's true of most three-dimensional things, depending on the lighting. In here, it's kind of ambient lighting, um, but just like how there's a highlight on the curved part of the almonds, there's also a highlight on the curved part of the Reese's. Um, so your very last step is just going to be to erase these margins. I have honestly ruined so many drawings at this stage because I'm too rough <laughs> when I go in with the eraser and the paper will like wrinkle. It's a terrible feeling. So be gentle at this part. In the lithographs that we're looking at, um, she does these really bright backgrounds with kind of wavy edges like a doily um, that you would see in a diner or in like a pastry case. 
I think that might be a really good use of color for this. It's kind of taking it straight out of her book, but I think she made the right move by doing that. Okay, I think this is basically done. And again, you could do this with any of your favorite things. What I love about drawing is that it just helps you to see the world around you in more detail. Um, it helps me to appreciate all of the things that make my favorite snacks so unique and tasty. All the things that I like about them. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed making this drawing. Later this summer, you can see some of my work. Um, I'll be curating a show at the Moncrief Cancer Institute with uh, another artist friend of mine, Adriana Touch. Um, and I'll also be curating a show at Browder Street, which is an artist-run space in Dallas. So I hope I'll see you there. And thank you for looking at Julie Bosey's American Donuts with me today. Thank you, Corey, so much. That is a fun drawing. Uh, we'll be back with a new project and a new artist at uh, 2 p.m. the next first Sunday of the month.